here we are starting a new block, the last block of this class, which is spectrophotometry or spectroscopy. There are different words describing the same. I will skip most of theoretical material that requires knowledge of quantum physics, quantum chemistry, some electrodynamics, and I'll concentrate only on practical aspects of spectrophotometry usage. This slide show will show you the very beginning of chapter fundamentals of spectrophotometry, which is properties of light. Please read your textbook carefully. It's not too much material, perhaps a couple of pages. First, it's convenient to describe lights in terms both of particles and waves. So, wave description. Light waves consist of perpendicular oscillating electric and magnetic field. You cannot have only one field oscillating. So, if electric field oscillates in XY plane, magnetic field will oscillate in perpendicular plane. Plane polarized wave is shown in this figure. Now, if you have ordinary unpolarized light, you have such waves with planes located at different angles. The direction of propagation will be still the same. How we can describe the wave? To start with, uh, it's sufficient to describe only one parameter. If you have oscillation of electric field, uh, magnetic field oscillation will be proportional. So we we'll look at uh, a wave that can be described as a usual trigonometric sine function. Distance between two peaks we name wavelengths. Now there is height of wave, which is amplitude, and intensity of light depends on amplitude. Wavelengths and amplitude are absolutely independent values. Next, frequency is a number of oscillation that we makes each second. Why that? You have a wave traveling in this direction, so the intensity changes with time as well. Unit of frequency is uh, 1 over second, and uh, there is another word for 1 over second, that's 1 hertz. Just as a reminder, uh, we have oscillation of AC current, 60 hertz. Uh, you can hear the frequency of your radio station and so on. Now, there is one more parameter, that is phase. In most cases, phase is a random number for different photons of light, except when it's laser light, when all the photons have the same phase. Well, we'll not go into details. We'll not be using phase anymore. There is simple relationship between frequency and wavelengths. Frequency, that's not V, that's a Greek letter nu, multiplied by wavelength lambda, is speed of light. In media other than vacuum, speed of light is smaller divided by refractive index of that medium. So, f f 
for usual substances. Refractive index is larger than 1. Light travels slower than matter through vacuum. Actually, light, of course, cannot travel faster than speed of light. Nothing can travel faster than speed of light. So, for example, in air, it's almost empty. Speed of light is essentially the same as in vacuum. The difference is very small and cannot be observed in routine experiments. Now, for glass, speed of light is 30% smaller, so wavelengths in glass will be shorter. Now, the frequency will be exactly the same in any medium. When we talk about energy, it's more convenient to think not about waves, but about light particles that are named photons. Each photon carries energy given by very simple equation. Energy is H multiplied by frequency, where H is Planck constant. Again, very small number, and it's measured in joules per second. So, energy multiply by frequency will be of course in joules. Now, instead of frequency, we can use wavelengths coming from our equations. Frequency multiplied by wavelengths equal to speed of light. So, energy will be H speed of light divided by wavelengths. Alternative way of describing is wave number. Wave number is uh, simply number of waves in one centimeter. Now here it is new. Wave number is usually new bar. Uh, it's slightly confusing unit because many people forget about writing bar and you have new for frequency and new for wave number. Uh, uh, what's the difference? Units. Uh, wave numbers are always measured in reciprocal centimeters. So, common units for wavelengths would be angstrom for X-ray, that is 10 to the negative 10 meter. For UV and visible light, a more convenient unit and very common is nanometer, Nm, 10 to the negative 9 meters. For infrared light, a micrometer is better, that is 10 to the negative 6 meter. Uh, wave number, we never say reciprocal centimeters, we mostly say wave numbers. Even so, it's not a number, it's dimensioned units. Red light with longer wavelengths is less energetic than blue light. So, highest energy will be blue, lowest will be red in visible spectrum. There are no serious changes in characteristic when we go from one region of electromagnetic radiation to another, say from visible to infrared. Visible light represents only very narrow fraction of electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, usually we say it's from 400 to 750. Uh, some people will define it 380 to 780. Mm, uh, personally, I never was able to see light of 380 or even 390. Just checking myself. So, usually we say that 180 to 400 or 380 we name UV, ultraviolet. Visible, again, 400 to 750 or 380 to 780, very similar. 
uh, then next near infrared will be 780 to 2500 2500 nanometers uh, beyond that you have usual infrared radiation Wave properties govern light behavior such as interference and diffraction. Interaction with chemicals describe particle nature of lights, photon and energy. Electromagnetic spectrum showing processes uh, that occur in light is absorbed. So the lowest energy is NMR absorption. Say so nuclear energy can be very small. A larger can be electron spin resonance. Even larger energy is vibrations, infrared and Raman spectroscopy. Again, very narrow region is visible spectrum coming from red to violet. Next will be UV radiation. Beyond that point will be vacuum UV. In this region, air absorbs all of light, so you need to use a vacuum for your instruments. Very few people measure in this area. Even higher energy, we name X ray spectroscopy. Spectroscopies use the interactions of radiation with matter to obtain information about a sample. So we are sending photons. A look what happens to those photons. And by doing this, we have information about sample. Actually, we as humans do it all the time when we see something. When you see something, your eyes collecting photons from the sample. Now, uh, what types of measurements we do? First, it's emission procedures. Emission and luminescence spectroscopy are somehow similar. Uh, thermal, electrical or chemical energy is applied to your sample. As a result, it emits light. When heat or electrical energy applied, you say emission spectroscopy. When chemical reaction excites the analyte, we say it's chemiluminescence. In both cases, measurement of power, radiant power of light coming from analyte, give information about what's inside the sample, the identity of sample and its concentrations. The results are often ex expressed as a spectrum, which is function of wavelengths or alternatively wave number. And here you have intensity of emitted light. So we are not using any photons to produce emission. And that's why it's non-radiative process. Chemical medicines, by the way, it's fantastically beautiful area. You know it from firefly. In firefly reaction, uh, enzyme luciferase catalyzes the phosphorylation reaction of luciferin, a very complex organic compound, with adenosine triphosphate to produce oxyluciferin, carbon dioxide, adenosine monophosphate and light. Another example of chemiluminescence is a common light. Most common way of spectroscopy is absorption spectroscopy. So you have external radiation, light coming to your sample. And what happens next? 
Of course, light can be reflected, scattered, but what's important, some light can be absorbed. And then you can measure what is transmitted. The measure amount of light absorbed as a function of wavelengths. And this can give us both qualitative and quantitative information about the sample. So here, most commonly, we have ratio of transmitted to absorbed power converted into absorbance as a function of wavelengths. Again, we can use wave number. We'll focus here on absorption spectroscopy in UV vis region because it's widely used in chemistry, biology, engineering, agriculture, clinical analysis, many other fields. Uh, but the same processes can occur in any region of electromagnetic spectrum. So the simplest device for absorption spectroscopy need to include the source and then light is coming to the sample and later is collected. The last third approach is luminescence spectroscopy. Emission of photons is measured following absorption. So you have incident radiation, some radiation is transmitted, but your sample emits radiation by itself in any direction. So there are two types of luminescence, fluorescence and phosphorescence, result from absorption of photons and dissipation of energy in over all the angles. And now what's the difference between fluorescent and phosphorescence? Fluorescence is very quick, phosphorescence is relatively slow. Here we are talking about nanoseconds and smaller. Here we can talk about microseconds and even seconds. So the device will be source, light is coming to sample, and then we record secondary radiation and we plot it as a spectrum as a function of lambda. 